Hi, my name is Amaris Robison Peach, and I'm part of the product management team for our signaling portfolio. I've been a part of the Ericsson signaling journey for close to 10 years now, having originally started as a software developer in our R&D team. Now in the 5G era, you are navigating an exciting yet complex landscape. And the next phase of the network evolution is the jump to a 5G standalone network, unlocking the full potential of 5G with new revenue streams thanks to end-to-end -end network slicing and edge computing capabilities, to name just a few of the driving use cases. But figuring out the essentials and how to get your 5G SA network off the ground is a challenge that many service providers are now facing. So to support you as you embark on your 5G SA journey, I'd like to guide us through three key considerations when introducing the 5G core. The first is operational efficiency. How can you leverage the use cases enabled by 5G SA while still minimizing the operational complexity? And secondly, as a service provider, you of course strive to maximize your network's capacity, especially now to accommodate for the expected increase in traffic levels in 5G. But how and when can you best address this in 5G SA? And finally, as the 5G landscape evolves, ensuring the security of your network, both for internal traffic as well as in roaming scenarios, is still of critical importance. But what security enhancements does 5GSA provide? And how can you best introduce them to your network? Let's take a closer look at these three aspects one by one. Without question, 5GSA enables you to drive further innovation and shape the future of business and society in your markets. But the 5G core's service-based architecture also brings a challenge in terms of operational efficiency. Each network function, or NF, within the 5G core must be individually configured with all instances of the relevant peer network functions and be capable of handling error cases, whether via retries or reselection of an alternative NF. Now that may not sound like much, but this would result in a full mesh architecture requiring thousands of configuration actions just to get your 5G SA up and running. On top of that, relying solely on the network function view of the network does not allow for a holistic view of the full network status. But is it possible to instead bring in simplicity to your 5G core from the start? We believe and have seen that with the right signaling solution, it is. Release 16 of the 3GPP standards introduced the Service Communication Proxy, or SCP. It's designed to efficiently structure your 5G core network, reducing the configuration complexity per network function by allowing them to offload selection logic to the SCP. The SCP can also provide central and network-wide aligned error handling in case of NF failures. On top of the need for network simplification addressed by the standards, we've also seen how multi-vendor networks often hit road bumps during integration due to either varying compliance to or misaligned interpretation of the standards in the NFs. That's why we've developed our SCP with powerful and flexible message screening capability. So now, instead of requiring new software deliveries to fix an unexpected message header or missing body parameter, you can use our SCP to ensure interworking in just minutes with a simple configuration update. And in our experience with service providers globally, we know that being able to monitor your network centrally is a key priority. You want to see your whole network traffic running as expected from one place. But with TLS encrypted traffic, it's not possible to simply introduce an external probing function. 
But as a central network element, what better place to introduce this probing functionality than in the SCP itself? That's why we deliver an integrated and centralized probing solution with our SCP, capable of tracing both unencrypted and encrypted traffic. Now let's move to the second aspect to consider, maximizing your network's throughputs. Now, though 5G traffic volumes aren't expected to overtake 4G for several more years in most markets, having a solution in place for overload situations is still critical for your network from the start. Unexpected network failures can lead to signaling spikes, even in a network with a low number of subscribers. And if we try to address this on a per network function basis, we run into two issues. First, relying solely on the capability of each NF to address overload can lead to misaligned behavior due to implementation differences. And secondly, it's not possible for an individual NF to ensure that traffic is efficiently and evenly distributed across all available producers. It only has the visibility of its own traffic and not for all the traffic destined for the same set of producers. So what is the solution for effective load and overload handling in 5GSA? When it comes to handling signaling peaks, we still recommend reacting as close to the source of the overload as possible. In 5GSA, this means that the consumer, for example, an SMF or AMF, would act as the first line of protection against incoming signaling storms. The SCP can then provide a second line of protection before reaching the producer network functions and compensate for any missing NF consumer functionality. Additionally, as a central proxy, the SCP can also ensure proper load distribution for all traffic toward a given set of NFs. Considering the relative capacity of the NFs and steering traffic accordingly via weighted load distribution. But in case of a producer overload indicated by specific error response codes, the SCP can also reroute traffic to an alternative NF. And our SCP can temporarily take that affected NF out of the load distribution to allow it a chance to recover. The SCP can also react on the 3GPP-defined Overload Control Information Header, or OCI, carried in the HTTP response message. This allows an NF to indicate by what percentage the load must be decreased in order to return to a sustainable rate. The SCP then centrally adjusts the load distribution to relieve the affected producer. Now, we've discussed how you can both enable the simplification of your 5G core network and ensure an efficient and aligned load distribution and overload handling. But what about your third challenge, security? 5G has introduced enhanced network security, specifically with requirements for end-to-end -end encryption and mutual authentication via transport layer security, or TLS. But TLS management can be very complex, and many service providers are opting to first deploy their 5GSA without TLS to start, and then migrating to TLS as a second step. But this introduces the challenge of TLS migration. We recognized this challenge early on which is why we've developed our SCP with the capability to act as an interworking function between those NFs already migrated to use TLS and those NFs which either do not yet support TLS or haven't yet been updated to use it, allowing for a fully smooth TLS migration. So you now have the option to more quickly launch your 5GSA network without TLS to start and enable it later on when you are ready.
But now there's still the question of security in roaming scenarios. Now you may be asking yourself, do I really need to deploy 5G SA roaming? And if so, when? And when it comes to the use cases behind 5G roaming, it's certainly not one size fits all. Each service provider has their own specific requirements, which is why it's important to look at the unique drivers behind the introduction of 5G roaming to understand the rollout timing that's right for your network. And there are two roaming scenarios to consider with different primary drivers, national and international roaming. For national roaming, we see two primary use cases which require 5G SA roaming. The first use case is when an MNO deploys 5G SA for its own subscribers and due to contractual obligations, must also provide 5G SA for its MVNO partner via roaming. The second use case is for MNOs with limited 5G coverage within a country. To provide full 5G coverage for their subscribers, 5G roaming is required between MNOs. We see these two scenarios being applicable for service providers in countries both in Europe as well as Northeast Asia and in North America. For international roaming, we see a wider range of use cases. Considering a service provider's own MBB subscribers, launching 5G roaming is an important step in enabling network slicing, even when users are abroad. Additionally, as many countries, for example, in Europe and North America, are shutting down their 2G and 3G networks, it will be necessary to support both 4G and 5G for roaming with those countries. International roaming is also critical for ensuring smooth 5G connectivity for outbound roamers to countries with only support for 5G SA and not for 5G non-standalone as is already the case in some Southeast Asian countries. And finally, for your long-lasting connectivity use cases requiring roaming, for example, IoT or automotive, you need a solution that will last 10 to 15 years into the future. And that calls for investing in 5G roaming today. Now, considering especially that some of these use cases are becoming relevant just a step behind 5G SA itself, let's come back to the question of security. On top of the introduction of TLS, the standards have also defined the Security Edge Protection Proxy, or SEP, as the single point of entry into the network for all internetwork signaling. This allows the SEP to provide additional security features, such as topology hiding, ensuring that only necessary information is allowed to leave your network, as well as firewall functionality, providing stateless and stateful security checks, so you have the assurance of a secure network, even for 5G roaming. And we've covered quite some ground in looking at these three aspects. And we can see that 5G SA is here, with 5G roaming just a step behind. And a robust and proven signaling solution is critical for the successful evolution of your network. So let me summarize the key aspects that we've addressed. First, to maximize your network's operational efficiency, we recommend to include the SCP in your 5G core deployments from day one. And with our SCP, we not only enable network simplification, but we also bring our strong expertise and the proof of our SCP being live in a North American Tier 1 network already since 2019. Additionally, with our extensive experience in signaling over the past generations, we've addressed the pain points of complex inter-vendor integration by developing powerful message screening capability. 
a functionality that we've already seen ensure faster and smoother deployments of the 5G core network for many of our customers. Secondly, shield your network against overload and signaling peak situations by introducing a second line of protection with the SCP and benefit from the central and aligned load distribution algorithms and overload control that our SCP provides. Finally, keep your network secure and get ready for 5G roaming by ensuring that you have a SEP solution in place that goes beyond the standards with topology hiding and firewall capabilities that can protect your network against even the toughest threats. With these guiding principles, you're now equipped to start your own 5GSA journey on the right foot.